Belford. The one-time stockbroker spent 22 months in prison for fraud and money laundering after ripping off investors to the tune of more than $100 million. Today, Jordan Belford insists he's a changed man. In fact, he's coming to Australia, selling his tale of redemption and the importance of ethics in business at high-priced seminars. But the real wolf of Wall Street may not be all he seems, and authorities in the US want to know what's happening to his newfound fortune. Belford got out of jail eight years ago after having ripped off more than 1,500 investors of more than $100 million. Belford's scam was fairly simple. His staff of mostly young brokers were given the job of reeling in investors with legitimate stocks, then eventually pressuring them to buy shares in worthless stock. Using a technique called pump and dump, the company would force share prices up then sell off their own shares, leaving investors penniless. You actually said that you were able to take imbeciles basically and turn them into cracking stockbrokers who could make millions and you gave them a script mm. which was ultimately to show them how to lie wasn't mm. it the idea of um, having the script wasn't to teach them how to lie it was teach them not to lie when i walked into that firm but it was about teaching them how to manipulate no no it wasn't like that it was no you see this the scripts the sales itself but, but what you were wanting them to do was to sell and, and to close to, deals to close the yes. deal but to close the deal quite often meant that you had to really manipulate the client well that's, that's ultimately what ended up happening oh now remember i said in the beginning it wasn't like that ultimately yes as the ethics went down the tube it was never about all for us and screw the client it was all about we're going to make the clients a ton of money we're going to make a ton of money and the firm's going to make a ton of money. Everyone's going to succeed. But what wasn't one of your mottos, you know, don't hang up until the client either buys or dies? Yes. Well, what's but the it, message but, but, in that? But that doesn't mean that the client is not going to make money if he buys. But as far as 81-year-old Alfred Vitt is concerned, the intention was always to steal from him. And they would not take no for an answer. You try to sell and they'd say, Oh no, you should do this and do that. So got to the point where I was borrowing money to invest in his so-called stock and I ended up losing quite a bit of money. Can I ask you how much money you lost? Quarter of a million dollars. Oh, I love the outdoors. Like I say, I'm out here an hour or two every day and I mow my own yard. And it's like Bob Sheeran, Alfred Vitt got a call out of the blue and lured into Stratton Oakmont's scam. He was in his early 60s when he lost his money and spent some years after struggling to make ends meet. So losing a quarter of a million dollars at that point in your life would have been devastating. It would, especially when you're thinking you're going to make some money and then ended up losing that much, yes. And how long did it take you to recoup that money? Well, I probably till I retired, I kept working till I was 70 years old to help pay back the banks and things that I... If someone is worth $20 million and loses 300,000, that's terrible, but it's not a tragedy. If someone's worth 300,000 and loses 200,000, that's a nightmare. So I do have colors of this. I think it's much, much worse when someone doesn't have a lot of money, loses a substantial amount of money. Surely it should be, it's all bad. I believe it's all bad. I believe there's, I disagree with you 100%. I think there's degrees of bad. You think there are de degrees Absolutely. of bad in, there, what, and in they what all you start, And they all start at really bad. But there's really bad and then horrifically bad. Yes. And, and is it because you feel that they were wealthy and they could afford to lose some money? Certainly so, yeah. What is your one greatest regret? My greatest regrets for sure is losing people money. Absolutely. If I could have done, if people say, would you change anything? I said, I just wouldn't lose people money. That 100% of all money he receives from his books and the movie will be given to his victims. This is my pretty flower over here. Those victims, however, are not holding their breath and believe any talk of redemption is somewhat premature. I would caution those people who are accepting his messages just be careful, know who your messenger is.